Welcome to the Bentley Systems Training Course, where you will learn how to assign properties to members in the STAD Pro Physical Modeler using STAD Pro Connect Edition. In this particular video, we're going to be taking a look at member end fixity, or basically frame releases to your physical members. Now, whenever a physical member is created in STAD Pro, both ends of the members are considered fixed by default, meaning that all of their degrees of freedom are selected. Now you can go ahead and alter this information either directly in the spreadsheet or by using a couple of the tools. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we're going to do is navigate to the appropriate spreadsheet where this information is stored. To do that, you can go to your spreadsheet tab and the ribbon toolbar, and then within the member tools, you're going to select this releases option. Here you're going to see that all of the degrees of freedom are fixed by default. Now this information can be selectively modified directly in the spreadsheet or again using the tools. Let's go ahead and use the tools for this particular exercise. Now all properties or specifications in the STAD Pro Physical Modeler are assigned using the select and apply method. You're going to make your selection and then select which type of property or specification you want to assign to the current selection. So we're going to start by selecting some of our steel beams in this particular model. We've already created a group for those members. To select members based on their group assignment, go to your data tab in the ribbon toolbar and select your groups icon. Here we're going to select our steel beam one group and ask the program to select those for us by clicking on the select button. Now our intention for this particular exercise is to hinge both ends of each of the currently selected steel beams. Now what you're gonna notice when you make a selection in the physical modeler is that some additional tools will appear in the ribbon toolbar depending upon what you have selected. So we'll go ahead and select the member tab in the ribbon toolbar, and we're going to find several different types of tools that are applicable to the member end fixity. I'm gonna focus on these first two tools here. Now, these tools can be used to basically hinge or fix both ends of the members, and it will go ahead and specify their releases automatically in the spreadsheet when you select these tools. I'm going to go ahead and select hinge both ends and we'll go ahead and see that reflected in the window. We can see the symbol appearing at both ends of each member and if we were to scroll over in the spreadsheet we would see that the moment has been released at each ends of the members. Now in addition to that we can also go ahead and hinge or fix one end of a member. And we also have tools available for that. So let's go ahead and clear our selection and let's select some of our steel girders. Here, I'm gonna go to the data tab and the ribbon toolbar. And again, go with my group selection. This time I'm gonna select my steel girder three group. Let's go ahead and click select. And then we'll go ahead and close on this. What might be also helpful is to go ahead and turn on your local access system when you are attempting to assign a property or specification to one end of the member versus another. So let's go ahead and click on our view tab and we're gonna turn on our local access system. Now for each of the currently selected girders, what we're gonna see is that the local X axis will always point from the starting end of the member to the ending end of the member. So here we can see that the starting end would be, we'll call this the left of the member, the ending end would be on the right hand side of the member. It's a good idea to have a good, good grasp of where the starting and ending end of the member is for this particular exercise. Now again, we're gonna go ahead and select the member tab in the ribbon toolbar. Now here we're gonna find an option to hinge 
each end. Now, the way this works is you're going to go ahead and be able to tell the program which end you want to hinge. And the program needs information about which end it is you're intending to hinge. So what we're going to also do is we're going to go ahead and select the nodes at the starting end of each of those members. Now, at times it might be more convenient to go ahead and move your rotation to make sure you know what you're selecting. I'm going to go ahead and select each of these nodes. OK, and I'll return back to my isometric view. So I have my girder selected. I have the node at the end that I am intending to hinge selected as well. And then I'm going to come up here and I'm going to go ahead and say hinge end. Now I have several different options here. I can hinge about a major principal axis, the minor principal axis, or the torsional axis. I'm going to select the major and the minor axis. So I'm going to select the first option here. This will release the M. Z. You can see the symbol has been updated. I'm going to select that option again and I'm going to hinge for the minor axis as well. And again, we'll see that information reflected over in the spreadsheet. So let's go ahead and select our entire model. I'm going to turn off the local axis and this will give me a very complete view about where my hinges are and where which members are fixed and of course you're going to want to make sure that this information is relayed on your drawings and the connections for these areas are detailed accordingly. If you found this video helpful please give it a like. If you want to see more such series consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.